Hey, welcome to another Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video, I want to go through the very basic stuff of editing with Lightroom, just like I did a few weeks ago with my Photoshop editing video. So that will just mean I will show you the workflow, how I'm editing my images from start to finish. That also means if you've been following some of my videos for a while, this content might not be news to you. Anyway, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file. You can find a link to it in the description of the video. And now let's go. So here we are in Lightroom. For the purpose of this video, I will only focus on the develop tab up here. And that's also where most of the magic is happening. Right away, let me answer a question I get asked frequently. When to use Photoshop or when to use Lightroom? Photoshop will be used when I'm only working on one or two images, but when I'm coming back from a trip, like in this case from Norway, and I have a ton of images to edit, I will mostly rely on Lightroom. You can already see it down there with those thumbnails. Here I can just quickly navigate through all my images which I shot on that trip. I can also rate them or just get rid of them. It makes the whole thing a lot easier and faster. So here we have the image I do want to edit. And for the whole workflow, you can pretty much follow Lightroom's UI. That means we are going to begin with the basic tab before continuing with the tone curve, the HSL adjustments, some split toning in the color grading tab, the sharpening, lens corrections and so on. This however doesn't mean you have to follow this order. For example, the very first thing I always do is to head into the lens corrections Make sure to check remove chromatic aberrations and sometimes, like maybe in this case, I'm going to enable the profile corrections. Since I have used the lens adapter, I need to select it manually. So let's just do that real quick. I have shot this on a Tokina lens. Let's choose it. And you can see this will slightly brighten up the image and kind of distort it as well. So that's really helpful already. Then after those lens corrections, I personally like to go through the basic stuff. That means I am changing the profile first and depending on what I want to achieve, I'm choosing different settings. Like Adobe Landscape is for more saturated images, while I'm going to use Adobe Standard if I want to have more control over contrast and colors, like in this case. Next up, we want to change the white balance. So by adjusting the white balance, we can in general get rid of color casts or actually introduce them. When you are taking a closer look, especially at the landscape in the foreground, you can see a slightly yellow color cast. That means I can bring down the temperature to remove that color cast. So let's do that. I do want to have a very strong blue color tone. So I'm going to drop the temperature quite a bit. Also. I want to have slightly more green in this image because we are working with the northern lights here. So let's bring down the tint. Perfect. If you want to compare the image to before, you can find this button down there in the left corner. On the right side, we have the edited version and on the left side, there's the original raw image. So you can already see we have made the image a little brighter by changing the profile. We have changed the color tones a little bit as well, making the whole shot a lot colder. So let's continue making this image a little brighter. For those brightness adjustments, we do have the tone menu right here. First off, I'd like to raise the exposure. And while doing that, you can see the histogram is changing with this slider. So you can always see if there's under or overexposure happening. Let's go with something like this. And of course, at that point, we are losing some contrast. So let's just fix that by introducing some contrast back to this image. Also, for more contrast, we could just drop the blacks. And here's a neat little trick. You can hold down the Alt key and click on the slider. And now when dragging it down, you can actually see where there is underexposure happening as you go further down. So this will help you a lot working on the exposure of your image. So I'm just going with something like this. This, by the way, also works for the whites slider. So just hold down the Alt key and drag it up to see where overexposure is happening. And right here we can see it coming in in the sky and the aurora. So I just want to go with a little bit extra here. Just like that. At the same time, I want to bring up the highlights. 
All right. Those were the adjustments for the brightness of the image. Now we do have some kind of special effects tab with the texture, clarity, dehaze, sliders. I probably use them on 99% of my images, but be very, very careful because they are super strong, especially the dehaze slider. And this one also kind of alters the colors of your image. Be extra cautious with this one. In this case, I do want to add a little bit of contrast, therefore the dehaze slider works pretty good but I'm only using a very small value here. Okay, and finally, we do want to introduce some more colors into this image. So let's bring up the vibrance and the saturation. All right, that looks cool. Now, here we are done with the basic adjustments. I said earlier, we can follow Lightroom's UI through the editing process. So that would mean after the basic adjustments comes the tone curve. However, I personally like to apply local adjustments after the basic stuff. That means I'm going to click this little button right here for the masking panel. And here we have a bunch of different settings. For this image, I do want to work specifically on the sky. And here we can just use Lightroom's Select Sky Mask, which should do a pretty good job here. As you can see, we have a pretty accurate mask for the sky. In here, I want to further bring up the contrast I also want to drop the shadows for even more contrast. And let's drop the blacks just like that. To make the northern lights a little more visible, we can add a little bit of texture, making it sharper and some clarity to make it pop a little more. Of course, because that's a low light image, we will end up with some noise in here, but since we don't need the sky to be that sharp, I can just add some noise reduction as well, just like that. Now let's work on the landscape in the foreground. How do I select only the landscape down here? That's pretty easy. Let's hit that little plus icon. I am going to use a linear gradient just outside of this image, so everything is covered by it. And on this mask, I'm going to subtract by hitting this minus icon. Here I'm choosing select sky. And now we have a perfect selection for the foreground. In here, I'd like to raise the highlights, which will make the foreground a little brighter. And at the same time, I do want to drop the shadows, giving this landscape some more contrast. This will increase underexposure. But you don't always have to prevent under or overexposure. Sometimes it's okay. And finally, let's further bring up the whites. All right, that looks awesome. Now I have the feeling there is some slight color cuts going on. And just like in the beginning of the editing process here, I can again work with the white balance sliders to fix that. So to prevent the yellow color cast, I am going to drop the temperature up here just like that to remove that ugly yellow color cast. And at this point, the landscape looks a bit too saturated. So let's, let's just bring down the saturation. All right, I guess that's it for those local adjustments. Then let's continue with the editing. As some of you might know, I'm not using the tone curve that often. For this shot, we could introduce a little more green to this image. So instead of the basic RGB tone curve, I'm heading into the green channel and create a point in the middle. Just drag it up slightly. And this will give us some more green tones, which fits pretty good for this Aurora image. In the RGB channel itself, we could add a little bit of contrast. So again, I'm adding a point in the very center. Then for the shadows, I'm creating a point on the left side and just drag it down a notch. And of course, you can do the same for the highlights on the right side. Drag it up. And this way we have created a simple S curve. But now comes my favorite part, the color grading. Let's start in the HSL panel. HSL is short for hue, saturation and luminance. With the hue, you can change a color tone with the saturation, of course, you can affect the intensity of the color. And with the luminance, you change the brightness of the color. So let's start with the hue. At the moment, the green tones in the sky are a little too intense. 
so we can make them go a little more yellow by bringing down the green hue just like that and I can also bring down the blue hue a bit giving the sky more of a cyan color tone for the saturation we could play around with the green saturation making the sky a little less intense maybe like this and then let's head into the luminance tab here we can push the green luminance to make the northern lights a little brighter so let's not overdo it otherwise we will lose details in here but this is looking really good all right and then we have the color grading in here we can find the split toning which is by far the best tool for me in photoshop and lightroom up here you can see different little circles one for the shadows one for the midtones one for the highlights let's start with the highlights in this image the highlights are mostly green we can enhance this effect by giving the highlights on this color wheel a green tone as well so let's say somewhere in this range and now we can choose how strong we want the saturation to be so let's turn it up quite a bit i think that looks pretty good so if i'm deactivating those settings for a moment you can see right now the difference is not that big it's rather subtle but it helps immensely to create a nice mood for your images so we are done with the highlights let's switch over to the midtones the midtones of this image as well as the shadows consist mostly of colder color tones here let's apply a cold color tone to the midtones that's looking like a good hue but i think i want to bring down the saturation just a little bit and you can see this way we get very natural color tones but we can keep it subtle of course you can also go really crazy if you want there are no rules to editing but for this image let's keep it at the lower point and then let's switch over to the shadows and again just use a blue color tone somewhere around here looks good and again let's bring down the saturation to keep it subtle perfect so that's it before the split toning and this is our image after the split toning i'm very happy with that so after the color grading sometimes i'm heading into the calibration tab don't worry about sharpening this is something i'm doing at the last step of the raw editing also we don't need to transform stuff right here because we are not working with anything regarding buildings or anything we need to fix the effects is mostly like vignetting which looks kind of strange on this image so i'm not so i'm not going to apply it or adding grain which also i'm usually not applying so we are left with the calibration tab which is again very helpful for the color grading process to be completely honest i'm still not sure if i understood what those sliders do I usually just play around with them and see what looks good. In this case, I want to bring up the red hue since it makes the northern lights pop out a little more. I want to bring down the green hue. And you can see how this only affects the northern lights mostly. And I want to bring up the blue hue. Just like that. And here we pretty much have the finished image. Now one more thing I want to do in the detail tab, the sharpening. For the sharpening, I'm always applying the same settings. I'm dropping the radius all the way down, increase the details all the way up. Then I'm using this little trick from before. Click the Alt key and just drag the masking slider. Here you can see which areas will get sharpened. So I only want the mountains, maybe also the stars to get a little sharpened. So I'm going to push the masking quite a bit. And then we can add some sharpening. Just like that. And that's it for my workflow going from start to finish in Adobe Lightroom. I hope this was interesting and helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.